All right, so we had a bit of a false start, so um, we had some shits and giggles then. Bit of a false start to our little chat about uh, uh, my mate Cliffy here, and he got in touch because he wants to throw out some general good vibes and uh, and discuss some perhaps some difficult vibes regarding some um, some aspects of some depression he's uh, he's faced over the last couple of years. And I'll just make sure this record goes okay. It looks like it's going to kick through and looks fine. So, um, so yeah, so basically recording a call for the group. Um, we'll do it over two or three calls. And the idea is to get to the bottom of, um, of the big fella and how it felt um, to go through what he's gone through. How are you, mate? Good? Yeah, good, mate. Good, good. now? <laughs> yeah, good. Um, yeah, much better now. Yeah. Good, good. So, uh, so thanks, for, thanks for doing it, Cliff. Fucking absolute legend. I was just saying before we got cut off the call, so... Um, I feel like I've known you for for twenty years, but don't don't know you that well. Um, what's your vibe, mate? Tell us a bit about yourself in brief. Uh, I'm married, married with four kids. Yep. Uh, been married for ten years, uh, together with my wife for fourteen. Uh, eleven years this year, actually married eleven years. Really? So yeah, just um, living the dream now. Eleven years Not much. married. Yeah, eleven how, years. How old are? Uh, well, thirty five. 35. 35, yeah. Kids nice. early. Yeah. Four kids, two girls, two boys. Four kids. Yeah. Jesus. I'm yeah. letting the crew down. Loved hey, it. I'm still like kidless at 30, nearly 35 years old, so I better get a fucking That's all right, mate. There's plenty of time. <laughs> plenty so, of time. Um, so, and how would you sort of, how would you regard yourself, Cliff? Do you, do you kind of call yourself a happy dude? Do you call yourself a serious dude? Do you call yourself a fucking, yeah, tell us. <laughs> Mates, uh, depends now. Mm. Now I'm um, I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah. Before, a couple of years ago, mate, no. Not so happy. No, I was very, very angry. Okay. Very what, angry man. What about prior to that? Prior to that, yeah. um, back when I was boxing, mate. Uh, back that was about two th- when I was 28. So mm. that's a while ago. Mm. I was good. I yeah. had uh, I had that release when I was boxing and that, and then stopped doing that, and then started focusing on business and work. Mm. And that's sort of when things turned. Okay. So did you did you run your own business or something? I did, mate. I ran a full sending business in carpentry as well. Yeah. Um, did that for uh, up until the start of last year. I stopped doing it last year. Really? Yeah, canned it. Canned it okay. Because of my health. Because of your health, yeah. Was yeah. it a successful business? It was at the start. I mm-hmm. uh, started getting, was going quite well, making good money mm-hmm. uh, as, you, as you go to business for. Mm-hmm. Um. And try to go bigger, try to get more work, more employees and so forth. And the stress came. Mm. And that's sort of when it started to go downhill. Mm. Mm. So did you, so, so obviously we want to talk a little bit about um, depression. So do you think that, that the work situation was in part a contributor? 100%. Really? 100%. I became angry. Yeah. Uh, I was always stressed. I was always hung out. I didn't see my kids play soccer, mm. footy on the weekends. Mm. Uh, my youngest son, he was uh, born on a Wednesday, 6.30. I went to work at 7 o'clock that morning. Jesus, fucking and hell. And didn't, didn't see him for 12 hours afterwards because I had to work. Mm. It was all about work, work, work. Got to work, got to work. Mm. Um, you know, couldn't wait. And mm. that's, uh, I missed out on a lot because of my kids because well, it was work. And then I turned to drinking to release the stress. Mm. It's easy to say, like, from the outside, like, I, w- I watch my brother and how hard he works, but when you've just taken over a business or started the business, it's not, it's not, it's not as if you can just sort of say, oh, no, that client can wait or that bill can wait or, you know, that invoice can wait. You've got stuff stacking up and it's, I'm, I'm guessing it kind of dawns on you quite quickly. It did, and then you've got to rely on people, uh, relying on people's heart. Mm. Um, and then to letting people down is, is, is not an option for me. It wasn't an option for me. Mm. Um, so I had to... I felt like I had to. It was mm. all on me. Did you have employees? And yeah, I did. I had two, uh, two at one stage, and then went to three. Mm. And then, as I got um, sick, uh, started um, letting them off work. It's busy, but not busy enough for them. Mm. Started hurting my work because mm. I was angry, yeah. stressed. Yeah. So, so what do you mean you're angry? Like, is that obviously we're going to, like I said, talk about a bit about depression? But what, what was the mm. like? What do you mean you're angry? Uh, so, I was diagnosed with a um, with depression, agita- and agitated depression. So I get ag- I get uh, anxious a lot, and oh. that would turn me. So through my therapy, I've learned that you've got a fight or flight mode, and mm. me's been my nature. I stand and fight. 
Mm. Um, so beating the chest, you know, some, well, some, the things that I couldn't control mm. uh, would always really upset me, uh, mm. would always make me cranky. Why couldn't I do that? Why couldn't I do this? I should know better than that. You know, um, instead of being in control, all the things I couldn't control, sorry, would would frustrate me. And mm. I started blaming everybody else for that. Mm. Um, my wife, she caught most of it, mm. probably. Mm. Uh, and then my employees, I just wasn't a happy person to be around. Mm. The only person I'd way I'd become happy was, yeah, started drinking mm. and, and then started self-medicating, which which dosed the problem, which made the problem worse. So were you were you self medicating before you knew what you're experiencing, or was it more so you're just angry and naturally what uh, most, most, most guys do is sort of turn to something? Yeah, it was turn, turn to drinking and and yeah, drugs. Cocaine was a drug of choice um, to to get away from me. I didn't like me. I didn't like being angry. Hmm. I didn't like being stressed. Hmm. You know, so I'd have a bad week at work. Mm. I think I'm right to go out and enjoy myself, go and drink and party and all that stuff. Mm. I'd have a bad week at work, so I think I'd be right to go out and drink and party and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So it just became a habit. It just became a bad habit to get away from myself instead of, I forgot what happiness was. Mm. I forgot so what, yeah. at, at that point, had you sort of gone to the docs or spoken to anyone or psychologist or anything like that? <clears throat> um, no. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I did. Was doing. Always doing anger management counselling and that. Mm. Um, mm. Suggested by my wife. God love her. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's, she's it's amazing, mate. She's something I don't ever want to <clears throat> lose. Yeah. Um, sorry. No, it's fine, Matt. You you can uh, um, take your time with it. So, so when you say you were, um, <laughs> and this is the thing, man. It's it's fucking very courageous to go back through it again. So when you say you you were drinking, what? Like, you know, so, like it's so, so funny. Like sometimes I think to myself, I drink a lot, but I don't really know what a lot is in relative terms. Like when you were having a beer or whatever, was it a beer? Was it how many? Yeah, beer. It was drinking a beer. But see, I, I it started out you know, Thursday night, go down for the badge stores at the clubs, and, yeah. and you drink till midnight, and then you'd wake up with a hangover, so you chase the hair of the dog, you know that sort of stuff. And then that went through till Sunday, hmm. and then it comes to Wednesday. Hmm. And it come every day of the week. I'd come home and I'd have, I'd have a couple of beers mm. and start feeling like shit at work on a Tuesday. So I'd go and chase cocaine. I'd mm. go and get on that, mm. and then you're chasing your tail around the circle with that too. Yeah. Right. Um, how long this was going on for before I was diagnosed? Actually, seek help. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I lost it. I was lost. It was probably a couple of months back at the start of 2015. I, I really couldn't have any reaction of what was happening not just due to the, the alcohol and drugs but more just due to the stress, the whole thing, hmm. the whole situation. Hmm. The anxiety would, would cause me to have panic attacks. Hmm. Um, I'd be driving and have a panic attack and I uh, wouldn't know where I was. I'd have to pull over and stop and try and gather my thoughts. I just couldn't Fuck. Couldn't find – I'd have to ring my wife because I wouldn't know where I was, what I was doing. Hmm. I'd black out basically but, yeah. Can you um can you explain because it's something that I know of but don't know completely about like what is a panic attack what how how would you define that um start something again things I couldn't control mm -hmm. I'd beat myself up about it um I'd start getting shortness of breath I'd start getting sweaty clammy hands I'd start tapping my feet really hard um heart racing, my heart would race, uh, I'd start sweating and then I'd just, all my thoughts and the subconscious part of my head would just get overwhelming <laughs> and that would be the part where it just, um, yeah, caused me to black out a little bit. I'd still be focused, not not black out as in a pass out, but I just would not have any recollection of what just happened. Hmm. So I'd, it was what they call again that fight or flight mode, I'd stay in fight, I'd get, I'd get cranky, I'd clench my fist, I'd get tensed. And then after it passed, it's like I need to have a sleep. It was just exhausting. My body was just like you'd been doing a, a two-hour workout at the gym. My body Jesus. was just so tense. It you was so tense. Did, you must have, like, you must have been, like, when you're in that tough spot, you must have been going through fucking loads of cash and you must have been just, yep. like, feeling, like, so, so, like, you know when you say you're in that flight-or-flight flight response and you just – rammed with adrenaline and then all you must go through like a flat spot where you're just like fuck can't almost like sleep debt yeah no, well i wouldn't sleep i'd go a few nights without sleep not due to the drugs 
but due to uh, the anxiety, I, I stopped. I stopped being out. I was always worried about what's coming the next day. Mm. So there was times where I'd, I wouldn't sleep for two, three nights in a row, and then again, that's when I'd chase to go and get substance um, self medicate to to get through the days, to get through that because I wasn't sleeping. Mm. It's not so the fact that I was addicted to the cocaine. It was more the fact that I needed an escape from myself. I needed that help instead of seeking things a positive way. Mm. Just all went negative, all went downhill. Had you talked to any of your mates about it or? Uh, or were you no. Nick? Okay. Oh, my mate Nick, mate Nick Richo, God love him. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he was, um, he, he was, he caught on to it a bit. He rung me up once and just had a little chat and I broke down with him then over the phone about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up having to sell my house over in Woolwee. Mm-hmm. and moved over here to Saratoga because of the influences I had over that way, in my way, with my friends, not their fault, just my influences that I couldn't I couldn't be there. Mm. I had to clean up. Mm. I had to get my head right. Mm. Not clean up as in I was a drug addict, it's more mm. clean up as in get my head right, get my get my focus back on my family and, and what was important. And how did your, um, if you don't mind me asking, like did, did your missus know? Did she pick up? Surely mm. she'd been close to you, she would have known. Um, no, she didn't. She thought I was having an affair. Yeah. Actually, she was, uh, which was not the case. Hmm. Um, I suppose in a way I was when I'd go out and I'd be drinking and hmm. then, yeah, I'd go out and get on the substance and 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 just go missing for a weekend because you, you, you're hung up or you But uh, not until my doctor rung her and, and told her what was going on. So he he started helping me out a week prior to it, hmm. um, the worst day uh, of my life, which was September 12th. Mm. contemplating on taking my life that day and went to see my doctor and was with him for four hours in the surgery at Clock Tower at Warwick. Mm. Um, he rang my wife and she came in and and went through it about, about what was going on with her. Uh, we didn't, he didn't tell her in full depth, as I'm saying to you guys now. You know, I just told her sort of what was happening and then September 15th was the day I tried to take my life mm. and tried to hang myself. Um which is um, was which was then I realised that I wanted to fight for life. <clears throat> when that rope was around my neck and I was choking, it was um, I fought, I fought hard, I fought hard to break it, <clears throat> and, and lucky at how and it did. Yeah. I did break it, and sorry, mate. No, <sighs> it just it's not an option, eh? It's not an option. It shouldn't be an option. I just don't want anyone to ever feel well, that that that, well, that load that load to think taking their life is an option. It's not an option. There's there's help out there. Um, I suppose I have to hit that rock bottom to realise that. Mm. Um, things started getting better. I was I was put in the mental health ward at Gosford there for, for days. Um, things started getting better, but then I was trying hard doing therapy once a week. Seeing my doctor once a week, and then, um, and then it, through the Christmas time, which is hard for everyone, money. Mm. You've got enough for your kids, trying to supply them. So I didn't think I was good enough for my wife and my kids. I thought that, I were, or it literally, to have that feeling that that everyone around you would be better off that you weren't there, mm. that they'd be better off without you, that she'd be better off with somebody else than me. Um, that's. That's a sickening feeling. That's sickening. It's it's the lowest part of it. nah. Mm. Mm. It's, it's fucked. Okay, well if we can, um, Cliff, let's just uh, let's have a break <laughs> on the first part of our video, then, man, and um, I'll let you kind of gather that. And yeah, thanks, thanks for sharing it, dude. It's fucking heavy, and we'll come back and talk a bit more about. Um, the actual illness of depression soon, okay? Yeah, man. Thanks, mate.